Hi guys, good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel again. My name is Sai Kiran. Today we are going to discuss about load balancers, guys. We are going to discuss about load balancer. So before jumping on to the load balancers, we do actually have two types. Not network and application, guys. Before that, we do have something called regional based. regional based load balancer and then there is another called vpc based load balancer okay so in this regional based load balancer we do have global accelerator or global load balancer and then here we do have two more things one is application load balancer and then another one is network load balancer okay so guys before jumping on to the practical let me show you the architecture now today we are going to do one proper real time task guys make sure if you do not have time okay but come back and watch this again so let me do, draw you the architecture now i'm going to take so i'll keep three private subnets Uh, today we are not using any public instances guys we are using three private subnets okay and then imagine this is a target group we will be keeping this in tz target group and on top of it we will create one load balancer today we are going to discuss only about network load balancer and tomorrow we are going to discuss about application load balancer here we are going to keep three public subnets nice and then after creating the load balancer we will be getting one dns name but we are not going to uh, access our uh, instances with this dns name for this what i'm going to do is i'm going to create one route 53 i'll create one domain name we are going to access with that domain name w w w w dot cloud vishwakarma vishwakarma dot in this is route 53 actually okay so with this we will accept this load balancer and then from here we do have target groups we will be attaching this private uh, subnets to the target groups and we will also be creating one nat gateway nat is for communication guys if private want to act, take anything from the public we can take this from nat gateway i'll also people who are watching for the very first time if you are not aware of the nat gateway i request you to please uh, go back and watch it if not you can learn this from this session itself only okay so this is the thing we are going to achieve this for today uh, before jumping on to the practicals let me tell you an another thing as i said there are of uh, two load balancer under vpc based one is network load balancer we are going to discuss this now this uh, network load balancer mainly works on transport layer guys which is also called as layer 4 and the second one is application load balancer this works on application layer this is layer 7 okay see guys this nlb load balancer this always works on tcp and udp protocol this is how you have to tell you in the interview uh, not just uh, like you know load balancers are of two types and one is application and no you are not supposed to tell like that an application load balancer work on http and https protocol okay so in interview if 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 an interviewer is asking uh, do you know load balancers or something you should not tell them yeah you know uh, there are of two types one is application and network load balancer no that is not the proper answer you should tell them clearly 
on what protocol it works and uh, what is the another uh, load balancer which on what protocol does it works i should tell them application load balancer supports only http and https protocol and network load balancer supports tcp and udp protocol but http and https are tcp protocols only however application load balancer doesn't support udp udp is again user datagram protocol so udp is mainly used for what udp is mainly used for gaming applications or streaming applications or teams zoom uh, webex all these remote sessions uh, so that is not supported by the application load balancer this is the major difference between these two so today we are jumping only on to the network load balancer so first we'll see what is this tcp and udp exactly and then we'll quickly network load balancer guys tcp is something example if you take file transfer app or sftp or winscp or at last we can take email i'll tell you in a very short way uh, this is not a networking session so imagine here there is an email box see not email box whenever a tcp in protocol what will happen is it it's completely works on source and destination or source or targets okay imagine here is a source okay and here is a destination so what it will do is when you enter www.google.com or www.something it will send a packet to the destination and it will make sure this source will wait for the response from the destination it will it will be done in a very fast way guys i'm just telling you but try to understand so what this source will do is in tcp protocol it always waits for the destination acknowledgement so this is how tcp protocol works for example you can take sftp sftp is nothing but secure file transfer protocol and winscp is also in file transfer protocol or email outlook uh, apple email all all uh, this comes under uh, uh, this tcp protocol itself only if you take udp if you take pubg okay if you take pubg one of our favorite games or hitman or something or battlefield or something see that doesn't require tcp that requires udp because udp works on example again if you take source and destination it doesn't waits for the destination re response it will keep sending the packets continuously when you're playing pubg whenever you're talking with your friend uh, uh, with the, the mic on or something so it doesn't need any response from the other one right he will definitely knows whether the sound is uh, uh, properly audible or not so in such case udp protocol is enough or if you take zoom sessions or if you take team sessions or i'll show you one thing i'll open google now and then i'll show you see in in some cases there is something called failover and failback protocols which were they will be working on both tcp and udp protocols also I'll, I'll open this uh, microsoft teams protocol see ms teams i'm running for teams functional correct you must open tcp port 18443 and udp ports also see microsoft teams works on both of the protocols okay and if you want to still uh, debug or search more on this you can go through the google and do it guys first what you have to do i'll refresh vpc create vpc vpc and more i'll close this and then i'll give you this as nlb 10 dot is okay for me number of availability zones 3 private subnets 3 public subnets 3 one in availability zone create vpc let's wait uh, for this nat gateway to complete do not jump onto the instances directly we should wait till it completes i'll refresh again guys see uh, it has been created now go to the vpc guys make sure that you are creating the security groups properly okay it plays a very crucial role during the time of this uh, load balancer uh, this entire project part let's go back to security groups once after creating your uh, uh, all the vpc components come here and then copy it 
okay this is our security group what we have to do is we will be allowing some tcp ports and http ports and also we'll allow some tls ports okay so for that you need to allow all um i'll allow all tcp anywhere and then also allow all traffic anywhere in real time don't do this guys here what you can do is you can select only particular port and i'll also allow http and https also https anywhere anywhere so all traffic and then also last one which is uh, ssh nice and then save goals now once after creating this what you have to do is you have to come back to the instances and make sure that you are creating instances only in private subnets not in public subnets okay launch instance and you should keep one one in each one a and one b and one c t2 micro is fine and then my key pair latest pen edit vpc make sure you are selecting properly and lb and then i need one a this is private us uh, yeah one a only don't don't need, we don't require ip and then security groups this is the one and make sure that you are pasting the script here because we need to test the load balancer right how we would know whether the load is transporting properly or not so what i'll do is i'll paste one small script where it installs nginx and then what we are doing is we are copying this host name from this cat command and then we are copying it to the nginx directory okay uh, this is server 1a fine fine launch instance now what you have to do is you have to quickly go back to the target groups and you can create the target group first and then you can create the load balancer come back to target groups open target group click on create target group instances is you have to select the instance i'll give as nlb hyphen tz this i'll take as tcp i'll select the vpc as my nlb i'll leave it as it is and then click on next make sure you are selecting all these private servers okay these are all private and then include as pending below create target group now what you have to do go back to your load balancer now create the load balancer create load balancer we are going to discuss this tomorrow guys application load balancer this gateway load balancer is again uh, i didn't test it maybe this is a regional based load balancer i think uh, here nlb and then i'll give nlb see inter this is internet facing and this is internal guys i'll tell you later about this okay now only i'll tell you what was this exactly see imagine if there are imagine if there are three servers one is web another one is app this is db now with the internal what you can do is you can keep one internal facing load balancer here okay and they can communicate each other so that is something which is internal facing load balancer see here you can select internal with the private ip address and then nlb guys make sure that you are selecting public subnets here not private subnets okay see you have to select public and then you have to select c 1a public 1b public and 1c public here these are assigned by aws only or you can also use elastic ip addresses if you want constant ip then what you can do is you can create uh, elastic ip addresses individually for now we doesn't require so i'm leaving it as it is for aws itself only and then here i'm going to select nlb 
guys here i'll select add listener i'll tell you last why i have selected add listener here and then again here i'll select tls 443 is the port number i'll select nlb target group i have created a certificate i'll show you now this is my certificate uh, this was issued by amazon actually i have taken this domain name outside i'll click this because this certificate does have access uh, from amazon itself only all security policies you can take anyone uh, i'll leave it in the as i'm leaving it as for recommended itself and then all good right listener tls fine now come down and click on create load balancer now i'm going to show you that certificate okay in aws we do have something called acm guys acm is nothing but amazon just hold on amazon certificate manager or aws certificate manager so here what we have to do is people who does have domain just follow the steps which what i'm telling right now because i have already uh, requested for the certificate it will take more than one day um, sometimes it will take more, more like less than five minutes itself only but in my case it has taken very much long time i don't know why so i have created this before coming to the session itself only simply what you can do first you have to open your uh, uh, route 53 come to hosted zones click on create hosted zones just forget about all these things guys click on host, uh, create hosted zones here you have to enter your domain name my domain name is cloud vishwakarma.in this is the domain name i bought from godaddy okay and then you have to enter the same here also i mean description it's as it is public and then you have to create hosted zones then you will see a tab like this cloud vishwakarma.in okay now what you have to do simply go inside don't do any changes just leave it as it is and then come back to acm which is azure um, sorry amazon uh, certificate manager here what you have to do is you have to click on request and then request a public certificate next and then here you have to mention see this star what this star indicates is it's a subdomain name you can give it as a www or basha.cloudvishwakarma.com or like you know sairam whatever you want you want to give that rep that star represents that subdomain and then dns validation and then rsa request so what it will do is once after you requested if you come back here it, it will not be displayed like this you have to click on this certificate id okay you have to click on the certificate id after some few minutes you will be seeing something called cname and cmem cname value here this is uh, AWS is just asking you were you the proper owner or not. This is just an, a type of authentication. So what you have to do, you have to copy this CNN, go to your route 53, create record. See how I created record here. Create record. And then here, paste the CNN. Make sure that you are removing this last cloud Vishwakarma dot in. And then you also make sure that you are removing the dot. Okay. This CNN dot cloud Vishwakarma dot in. And then this record type should be cname again and here you have to paste the cname value which is an authentication and if you click on create record what will happen is this certificate manager will come back in the back end and it will check in this hosted zones whether this combinations were there or not whether this cname values were there or not and it will make sure that you are the proper owner or not once the verification is done then it then it will issue a certificate now i'll show you after some few minutes i'll show you uh, how you can see this amazon issued certificate that is the reason why i have selected during the time of load balancer tls i'll show you exactly what will happen and then we have created a vpc let me write the steps for you uh, However, load balancer will take some time to come up. First step, what we have did. First, we have created VPC uh, with the NAT gateway. And then what we have created, we created instances. Uh, and then what we have created, we have created target groups. And then we have created load balancer. Now, one, two, three, four. Now, what we'll do? 
certificates you have to create before only you have to create certificate guys because it will take a lot of time uh, or else i'll do one thing i'll first write it as certificates only if you have certificate then you can uh, acm this is the first part you have to do and this is the second one third four five now what i'll do route 53 this is six let's go back and create a route 53 because we have created one load balancer right we need to attach that uh, load balancer to a domain name this is real time in real time we do like this only guys um click on create record first i'll www.cloudvishwakarma.in and i am telling i am going to search my private subnets i mean uh, whatever I kept in the private subnets, I wanted to search with this domain name www.cloudishwakarma.in and then I'll click on alias. Here I'll select alias to network load balancer and then I'll select the region here, US siphon east. In this region, I've created one NLB, here it is. And then I'll click on create record. Let's wait till it gets synced. Meanwhile, we'll go back to the load balancer and we'll check whether the load balancer has been created or not. Nice, it is active. See, our, our instances are healthy. Awesome. We have achieved the one of the important step. Now we should wait till this. We can still check with this domain name, but this is not the real use case, guys. That is the reason why I'm not checking. I can paste here. And see, now we are in 1C servers. If someone tries to accept this from different uh, server, they will be getting a different uh, name. Yeah, yeah, it's in sync now. Now I'll open one Edge browser and then I'll open one uh, Firefox. What I'll do, I'll enter www.cloudvishwakarma.in. See, now we are in 1A servers, load balancer is working. Guys, if you see here this key, okay, I'll show you the certificate route now, which what Amazon has been issued. See, issued by Amazon. This is how that ACM role plays, okay? If it is not there, then you can see here the site is unsecure, like that. From Chrome, it is 1C, from Edge, it is 1A, we'll see from... Uh, Safari, not Safari, this is what uh, micro, Firefox. And if I click here, see here we are seeing 1A servers. If you keep, if you keep searching this in different, different, uh, uh, like, you know, see, in a minute, there will be a lot of packets hitting to our domain, right? So in such case, you will be seeing different, different servers. I'll open uh, private tab and I'll see here if it is showing in a different tab. No, it is also working in 1A. It's okay, the load is still going on. But I do have one doubt here. Is it really sending the load to uh, all our instances properly, equally, or how it is sending? For that, what I'll do is I'll come back to where is my, yeah, where is it? Here it is. So now what I'll do is I'll just check all the IPs, uh, whether if, it, if the load is passing correctly or how it is transmitting the load with a small Linux command. Let me take the IPs first. This is 1A, right? What is the IP? 143.172. Okay. Here. While true. Do. Curl. Hyphen SL. HTTPS column double slash www dot cloud v i s h w a k a r cloud issue karma dot in and then grep hyphen i what is my ip guys instead of giving the complete ip i'll just give only these two digits i mean these two numbers because see our entire instances are on 10.0 only correct this is 10.0 this is 10.0. See, we should play a proper role during the time of the subnet uh, assigning only. It will help now. 
and then if you click on 1c it's 10.0 only so it's okay we can give 10.0 uh, itself only i'll paste this and then uh, enter sleep for one second and then done command not phone grab iphone i'm sorry oh okay see guys now it is going for 180 172 221 180 172 221 180 172 221 180 172 221 but still if you still wanted to check in a detailed way whether if it is really uh, like you know uh, sending it properly to the instances uh, simply what you can do is uh, here there is a command called t hyphen a aws nlb okay The Python is wrong. What it will do is it will copy all this uh, uh, this logs to the and uh, there is a file called nsb nlb dot log. We have created this file right now. So what will happen is now it is uh, pinging right continuously it is pinging to different different uh, servers in 1a 1b and 1c but still we do have th the doubt whether if it is transmitting the route correctly to all the three instances or not because the weight should be fall on uh, on the three instances properly okay for that i am running this let, let it take some logs i'll stop it here now if you enter cat aws nlb log uh, nice we got the log here fine now what i'll do is cat aws nlb log and then grep hyphen i i'll take the uh, this ip which one private instance one ip yeah here it is copy it paste it and then what you have to do wc hyphen l See, 14 calls have been, uh, 14 packets have been sent to the private server 1 and for the private server 2, how many calls? Oh my god, it got signed out. Log file is there? Fine. Log file is there. Cat, AWS log, grep i I'll paste this IP and then wc l. Ah, for this one also it is 14. Nice. What is the third one? 172.221 nice 14 14 14 guys but still i checked only from my end because i was the only one who was running the logs here but in real time what will happen you know there are millions of users will be hitting to your website imagine instagram is there facebook is there in such cases the load should be transmitted properly correct it should not transmit it in a different way so, so for that what we'll do is I'll show you. Come to the load balancer, click on attributes, go to edit. This is the interview question, guys. This is the interview question. They'll ask you how to enable uh, cross zoning. Okay, then you have to tell them, go to the load balancer and then click on attributes. Under the attributes, you have something called uh, uh, enable cross zone load balancer. You have to click on edit and then you have to do that. Guys, now I'll click this enable cross zone load balancing. Okay, don't look here. Look here. Here what happening exactly is whenever a user searches something with the help of DNS here DNS is nothing but our route 53. It is sending the traffic to packet. I mean instance one instance two instance three in network load balancer. We kept the public subnets. These are the target groups. Okay, see that's why it is like this target. Here are private subnets over there. What it is doing. It is sending one two three if there are three packets imagine if one million packets are there so here there is something called cross zone functioning now see guys see here exactly see here what will happen see what will happen is whenever this load is high automatically this when you enable uh, uh, cross zone load balancing network load balancer what it will do it will automatically transfer the route to the another uh, uh, two instances this is how this cross zone load balancing works but there is a separate cost for this 
uh, again for the data data transmission also it uh, charges some costs for uh, this enable cross zone load balancing okay uh, that's all for today uh, the session went up to very long time i'll uh, i personally request each and everyone to do practical guys this is very very important uh, interviewers might be asking you two three four questions from this session uh, this is a proper real time if you see here we haven't used any kind of public instances here all were private instances itself only okay and that's all if you ask me on a high level the reason why we are uh, like you know there are two load balancers network and application is see in this network load balancer which whatever we have practiced it right now uh, where is my paint here it is whatever we practice right now there is no http to https forwarding guys i'll show you now here if i enter http colon double slash www dot cloud issue karma dot in see it is not redirecting to https it is only staying with the http only which is in unsecure and there is something called url path based routing was also not there okay in this network load balancer and in future we'll be talking about something which is uh, i'll show you which is web application firewall called as waf so this web, web application firewall is also not supported and the major point here in network load balancer is it cannot be used as an ingress in kubernetes we will learn this later after devops so these are the major issues when it comes to uh, network load balancer tomorrow we are going to do a project on application load balancer it is also a proper real time project we'll definitely meet in the tomorrow session guys have a nice day everyone i request you to please do practice and do not worry about the bill and all uh, it will be very less itself only it's not uh, that big figure uh, make sure you're stopping uh, your nat gateway and then make sure you're stopping your load balancers make sure you're stopping your target groups and especially make sure you're releasing your elastic ip it is very important guys we are lack of this uh, elastic ip so make sure first stop nat gateway and then release the elastic ip that's all for today tomorrow we are going to meet have a nice day everyone happy sri down only bye